Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Wyatt and today I'll be teaching you about basic math on Roblox. Okay, so all basic math is, is a way for us to take equations that we would use in real life and expressions and use them in Roblox for our values, for our Roblox game. Anything that you want to use basic math for, you can do it with Roblox because of the tools that Roblox gives you. So I'm just going to show you a little bit about what basic math is. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new script under server script service. And I'm just going to name it basic math. And the first thing I want to go over is a few of the different operators that we can use in Lua. So the first operator that I'm going to go over is the addition operator. And that's just a plus sign, as you know in real life. And all we have to say is one number, and I'll just choose one for that number. And then we put the addition operator, and then we put another number. So for whatever operator it is, you replace like this addition operator right here with that operator. But for right now, we're just gonna use the plus sign. So this is really cool. We have one plus one, right? And we can add one plus one plus one. We can add as many ones and add as many as we want, but it's not gonna mean anything unless we store it in a variable. So I'm just gonna create a new variable. I'll say local sum, because we're adding right here, equals, and then right after that, right after that equal sign, we can put our basic math with our operator. So I'm just gonna copy this over to right here, and there we go. So now, so whatever the value of sum, sum is equal to the value of one plus one. And of course, you all know one plus one is equal to two, but for our computer to know that, we have to put it into a variable so we can actually access it. So if we run the game just like this, you'll see, we print out sum, sum is equal to two. Now, the next operator I'm gonna go over is the multiplication operator. So normally, if you're in real life, if you're multiplying, you'd either put a dot in the expression or you'd put a multiplication symbol. And it's a little bit different on a computer because we don't have any of those symbols. So we press shift and then we press eight. And then that gives us an asterisk. And this basically, this is the operator that will multiply two numbers together. So we put the first, multi the first multiplication number right here and then the second one right here and it'll multiply them and put the result in that variable. So if we were to say maybe two times two, you all know that's four and we'll just say product right here because it's not a sum, it's a product. And then if we run the game, you'll see it'll say four, it'll print, it'll multiply the two numbers because of that operator. The next operator I want to go over is a subtraction operator. This works just like it is in real life, but it's just a dash instead of you actually drawing out the minus sign. Uh, and this will just subtract, you know, the first number minus the second number. So if we were to say two minus one, and we'll just name this difference, and we put this in the print, and we run that again, it'll yield one, right? Very basic, very basic math. It's just the operators you have to memorize if you're not used to typing in equations on computers. Um, and then finally, we have the division operator, and this is a forward slash, so it's right next to the period. It's to the right of the period on a US keyboard and to the left of the shift. Uh, and this will divide the first number by the second number, and it yields us a quotient. So we'll just say quotient, and then if we put, paste that in there, and then we run the game, you see, it'll print two, because two divided by one is two. Now, these are just some of the really simple uh, operators that we have and all, all we've done so far is just putting direct numbers we've only put two divided by one or one times one we haven't actually put variables in right we haven't put values that are accessible through our roblox game so what i'm going to do i'm going to delete all the code here and i'm going to create a new variable called local number one and the number one our first number that's going to be equal to seven and now i'm going to create local number two so this is our second number and I'm gonna make number two equal to three. Now what we're gonna do is create a new variable called difference, local difference, and we're gonna subtract these variables. Now we're not just gonna say local difference equals seven minus three, right? That's easy. We need something that actually uses these variable numbers. So if we change this to six, it'll change this value to six too. And if we change this to four, it'll change this value to four. So let's change this back to seven, seven and three. And all we have to do is instead of putting the number in there and then the operator in between, we just put the variable name. So if we want to subtract number one minus four, right? We just put number one minus four. And if we run the game just like this, easy, it should. Actually, we have to print it out first. We're just gonna say print difference 
just like this. And then if we run the game, in our output we get 3, because number 1, which is equal to 3, right? We or equal to 7, we say number 1 is equal to 7. 7 minus 4 is equal to the difference of 3. And so this is just, we use one variable, but we can use as many variables as we want. Maybe instead of saying number 1 minus 4, we want to subtract number 2. So we can say number 1 minus number 2, and we can substitute those numbers that we had in the expression before with actual variables that are in a Roblox game. So if we run it again, 7 minus 4, don't we have to print it again? My bad, I keep making that mistake. We actually have to be able to read it somehow, so we're going to print out our difference. And we'll run it just like this, 4, right? So we're subtracting whatever the variable numbers are. And if we change this value to 6, and then we run it again, because we stored it in variables, see, it changes it to 3 this time. So it's very useful to do this with variables. And you can do the same thing with the other operators I was telling you about. So that's just subtracting. Maybe if we want to do addition, so we'll say sum. So 6 plus 3, that's equal to 9. You all know that. And we just have to tell the computer to print that out. And we just change that operator to the plus sign instead. And we run it. There we go, 9. Maybe now we want to multiply them. Maybe we want to multiply 3 by 3, right? 3 times 3. That is also equal to 9. So if we run it, See, just like that, because we change that middle operator, we can change it to any operator that Roblox supports. Now, those were just four of the most basic operators, but there are actually three other operators that I want to tell you about, because they can be really important when you're developing a game. So let me just delete all the code. So I showed you the addition operator, the subtraction operator, the multiplication operator, and the division operator. But now I'm going to show you three other operators. So the first one is the exponent operator. The second one is the modulus operator. And the last one is the negation operator, which is the same as the subtraction operator. Um, so the first one, so we first have this right here. This is the exp exponent operator. Um, so let's just create a variable. We'll say local exponent equals, and now we'll actually put our exp expression in here. Um, so what we're going to do is we take a number, so let's just take 4, and then if we press shift and then we press 6, we get this upwards caret, that is the uh, sorry exponential operator. Um, so then all we have to do is put our number in here, so if we were to put 2, what this would do is it say 4 multiplied by 4 two times. So saying that is the same thing as saying 4 times 4, right? We're multiplying 4 by 4 two times. We're multiplying that number by itself two times. So again, we could say maybe 4 to the exponent of 3, and that'd be saying the same thing as 4 times 4 times 4. So 4 three times multiplied by itself. And we could say this by 15. Now we could write out 4 times 4 times 4, right? A bunch of, we could write it out 15 times. But that would take so long and it'd be so tedious. So it's so much easier just to use this exponent operator right here. Then we just give it a power, right? That's what it's called. It's called a power just like in real life when you're doing math uh, in school. So we say 4 to the 15th and it'll multiply it 15 times. The next operator I want to talk about is the modulus operator. Now a lot of people don't know about this, but it's actually very simple. Uh, so we'll just say local number or local result equals and then we'll put our uh, expression right here. So the way the modulus operator works is if you're dividing and you have a remainder, so instead of dividing and actually doing the decimal at the end, if you're doing long division and you have a remainder, that's what the modulus operator is going to return. So if we say look result equals 10 and then the modulus operator and then we say 5, because 10 divided by 5 is 2, right? That's an even number, right? 10 divided by 5 is 2. If that result, that modulus, right, that's going to be equal to 0. That's not going to be equal to anything. But if we put this operator and then we say 6, 10 divided by 6, where well, you can see right here, that's an uneven number, right? It repeats forever. It doesn't go in evenly. 6 doesn't go evenly into 10. So it's going to return that extra value, right, that um, remainder and it's going to put it into the result variable. So in this case the remainder of 10 divided by 6 that would be 4. 
So that's why we use the modulus operator when we're trying to get remainders. And you might not think it's useful now, but I guarantee when you get into a little bit more advanced scripting, you're going to find a place where you're going to want to use it. Um, the next thing is very simple. It's the exact same thing as the subtraction sign. It's the unary negation. Uh, and all that means, right, very fancy word. I don't know why they decided to name it that. But all it means is negative numbers. So if we were to say negative 7, right, put the minus sign right there, put the dash, and then put a 9, negative 9. So 9 away from 0 in the negative direction. We could say negative 10, negative 11, and we could even add things if we wanted to. So we could say negative 11 using that operator plus maybe positive 11. And that would yield result to equal 0. So congrats if you made it this far. I know it's not easy to watch a long tutorial on just these basic operators. And I promise you, I know it may seem like this. You're never going to use this. Why? When would I print something out to the console when I'm printing a number? Why would I do that? It's The whole point of this is to prepare you for the future when we get into more advanced scripting. That's why I have all these videos in the series. So when we get to advanced scripting, you're ready for it. Because you're going to use these same principles with complex variables. You use them with all different types of things. So that's why it's really important that you learn basic math now so that when we get to that point, when we get more advanced, you'll be able to make really cool things. You'll be able to make tweens, you'll be able to make things that fall out of the sky, confetti, all using these same principles of basic math. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. I'll have some extra resources in the description, and I'll see you guys later.